So the second part, which is the first of the linear algebra. In the first video, took that third order equation and solved it the standard way with the auxiliary function and so on. This time, I'm going to split this into three separate first order differential equations by using these substitutions. First of all, let z, being a function of x, equal y. Let z2 be the first derivative of y, and z3 be the second derivative of y. From those three, I can then say, differentiating the first one, I'll have z1 dashed, the first derivative will be y dashed, and y dashed is just z2. z2 dashed will be y double dashed, and y double dashed is just z3. z3 dashed will be y treble dashed, now this time there isn't anything to equate it to, so I'll go back to the original equation, and I've got this for it. That third derivative would be, taking everything to the other side, would be 7y dashed plus 6y plus x squared, which is 7, now y dashed is z2, 6y, which is 6z1, plus x squared. And there's the system of three first order differential equations. I have z1 dashed equals z2. But I think I'll set it out into the three separate functions I've got now, the z1, z2, z3, to form the matrix. So I'll specifically say I've got no lots of z1. I've got one lot of z2 and no lots of z3. z1 dashed turned out just to be z2. Z2 dashed is just Z3. So there's no lots of Z1, no lots of Z2, and one lot of Z3. Now, obviously, this is going to be a pretty simple little matrix. And that's because these functions aren't just three separate functions, each having their own identity. They're simply the derivatives of each other. That's why in this particular case, going through all the linear algebra will seem so long in comparison to just solving that straightforwardly, because those are all interrelated. So don't start complaining about the length of this. This is to illustrate the technique. And the original one here was just to demonstrate the validity of the results by comparing the two answers. And where was it? So Z3 dashed is going to be, now I've got six lots of Z1, seven lots of Z2, no lots of Z3, but this extra X squared at the side. Now that isn't going to interfere with this matrix, it simply means I'm going to have two separate parts. And then I do this. Those three separate functions, those derivatives, I'll just write as a vector having those individual parts as the components, so z dashed equals. This matrix times, and z will stand for those three as its components. So the matrix equation would be 0, 1, 0, because z1 dash would be no lots of z1, one lot of z2, no lots of z3, and so on. 0, 0, 1, and 6, 7, 0, Z, and then separately, to balance it, it would have to have, the, for the first one, there was nothing added, for the second one, there's nothing added as well, but for the last one, it's X squared. There's the system of equations that we're now going to solve using the linear algebra. Just rewriting that as Z dashed equals AZ plus F, where F equals this. So let F equal the set of the functions which were on the right-hand side of the equation. Now, the first step, though, in solving this will be to diagonalise the matrix A so that you can decouple these linear equations here. I'm only going to find Z1, Z1 when I get an equation that just involves Z1, the one function, all the way through. Same with Z2. Just now they're jumbled up. So diagonalising this matrix will allow me to decouple the system and have separate equations for each of those. So in the next video, it'll just be, how do you diagonalise this matrix A here?